What they are about to do to turn the country to a large construction site for housing units. President Tinibu kicks off affordable mass housing with launch of 3,112 units in Abuja. NLC and 2UC issues 14-day notice of nationwide strike over what they term unmet agreements by federal government. Deploying both military and diplomatic resources to ensure that the safety and security of all Nigerians. Also coming up tonight, Speaker Tajuddin Abbas urges Nigerians to be patient to reap the fruits of ongoing economic reform policies of the Tinubu administration. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I am Jumma Yusuf. Michael Olale will be joining us later tonight from Lagos. And Benny Adams is standing by here in our Buja studio with some business news. And Badi Adele is also set with some of the latest news from the ongoing Afcon in Cote d'Ivoire. Remember, you can watch this broadcast live via our website, nta.ng slash live, and also on our other social media handles displayed on your screen. We begin tonight with a presidential directive to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security to immediately release about 42,000 metric tons of grains from the National Reserve to cushion the effect of current food shortage in the country. This was part of the outcome of the second emergency meeting of the Presidential Committee on Food Intervention held at the State House this Thursday evening. State House correspondent Musba Dan Wahab reports that the meeting chaired by the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabia Mila, resolved to take action on various measures categorized into short, medium, and long term to ensure food security in the country. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, who briefed the media after the meeting, disclosed that the government is equally demanding the release of product by the Rice Millers Association from their storage. The Prime Minister of Agriculture and Food Security has been directed to release about 42,000 metric tons of uh, maize, millet and other commodities, gari and other commodities as in their strategic reserve, uh, so that uh, these items will be made available to Nigerians, 42,000 metric tons immediately. The second one is that we have held meetings with the Rice Millers Association of Nigeria are those who are responsible for producing this rice and we have asked them to open up their stores. Uh, they've told us that uh, they can guarantee about 60,000 metric tons of rice. This will be made available and we know that that is enough to take Nigeria you know in the next you know, couple of weeks, uh, one month, six weeks, perhaps up to two months, uh, 60,000 metric tons. Uh, they've agreed that uh, they will make that available to Nigerians to bring it out to the market so that uh, uh, you know, food will be made available. Now, the whole idea of this is to crush the cost of these food items. And these are measures uh, that will happen immediately. While planning to invest massively in agriculture, the government says it intends to take a stern position against food hoarding. Now, government, of course, is also looking at all those who are holding these commodities because uh, actually these commodities are available in the stores of uh, many uh, traders. Government is appealing to them that they should open up this, uh, uh, these stores, make these uh, commodities available. In the interest of our nation, there is no point when the whole country is looking for this food. Uh, you are locking up these uh, products so that you make more, more money and then Nigerians suffer. Government is also looking at the possibility of, uh, you know, um, if it becomes absolutely necessary uh, as, and as an interim measure um, on, on the short run to also import some of these commodities uh, immediately so that, uh, uh, you know, these commodities can be made available to Nigerians uh, immediately within the next uh, couple of weeks. 
In the meantime, a statement from the Nigerian Petroleum Petroleum Company Limited is assuring the public that there is no imminent increase in the cost of premium motor spirit, PMS, commonly known as petrol. NMPC Limited urges Nigerians to disregard what it calls unfounded rumors and assures that there are no plans for an upward review of petrol price. It advises motorists nationwide against engaging in panic buying as there is availability of petrol across the country. Another reassurance, and this one comes from President Bola Chinibu, who has again promised more positively impactful programs and projects that will leave Nigeria brighter and better off than he met it as president. He made the promise at the launching of the renewed Hope Cities and Estate during the groundbreaking ceremony of the pilot housing project at Karasana in Abuja. State House correspondent Musbau Danwahab reports. In the last three decades, housing needs continue to grow alongside the population of a country. Previous administration had come up with various schemes, yet the deficit steadily increased from 7 million in 1991 to about 28 million as of 2023. To effectively break the gap, about 21 trillion naira is said to be required. <laughs> And now, the current administration is beaming new hope on the sector with the renewed hope cities and estates. Ambitious as it appears, the solution is already worked out in its renewed hope action plan with the administration targeting to, in collaboration with other tiers of government and private sector, get even the poorest Nigerians climb onto the housing ladder. The project aims to deliver 100,000 housing units nationwide, with 20,000 planned for the FCT, beginning with these 3,112 units at Karasana. Shelter is a necessity. It's a human right. And we are here just to do that. What they are about to do, to turn the country to a large construction site for housing units. However, the president is quite sensitive to the current situation in the country. And in a seeming reaffirmation of commitments, President Sinebu remains resolute and positive that Nigeria is on its way to greater heights despite the current rough patches. We stand the test of the time and bring a glory of Nigeria brighter than we met it. We did say it will be El Dorado, smooth all the way through, but we are confident that this country, this country, we excel in all ramification at it. I pledge to Nigeria, my country. Being faithful and committed to the economic development and prosperity of every one of you. And so, the president wants Nigerians we to share the hope, show commitments, and be ready to make necessary contributions for the betterment of the country. In Abuja, Musbao, Dan Wahab, NT News. Meanwhile, stakeholders in the housing sector are hoping policy makers can curb limitations impeding progress within the sector with political will and commitment. Francis Udojo tells us more. One of the major achievements of this administration is the separation of the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development from that of works. Uh, this is to give ample opportunity to the sector to deliver on its mandate of providing access and affordable housing to all Nigerians. The launch of the renewed hope cities and estates by President Bola Ahmed Tinibu in Abuja signaled a new dawn in the housing sector. The funding for this project will come from a mix of sponsors comprising the Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development budgetary allocations, the Federal Mortgage of Nigeria, the estate development loan they are having, and the public-private partnership with future developers. The minister said government plans to build 100,000 cities and estates across the federation as Karasana Housing Project serves as the pilot for 3,112 units 
out of the 20,000 housing units mapped out for the Federal Capital Territory. What Nigerians should expect is they should begin to see new estates that are within the affordable range and with affordable mortgages to acquire them. Having had the groundbreaking ceremony, it is expected that in the next one year, this project will be completed and Nigerians will smile with their keys in their hands. In Abuja, Francis Sudojo, NT News. Indeed, Francis, Nigerians will smile. And now let's bring in the Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Musa Dengiwa, to speak on the President's vision for affordable housing solutions in Nigeria. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. I'm sure that even in your position as Minister, you still reflect on the Jack Conde mass housing policy for the poor and the evolution of social housing in our system. Anyway, times have changed, but as we begin the phase of renewed hope cities and estates, how much impact do you envision this would make in bringing the housing deficit in Nigeria? And what do Nigerians need to know about the housing estate itself? Well, in order to increase the supply of decent and affordable housing to Nigerians, that's why the current administration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu we created the Renewed Hope uh, Estates and Cities. This is an, uh, a program that is going to go around the whole country, whereby the cities will be developed one in every geopolitical zone of the country, up to a thousand houses in every of the six geopolitical zones of the country in the cities. The others are the estates. Renewed Hope Estate will be developed in, in the 30, remaining 30 states of the country whereby we intend to have a minimum of 500 uh, affordable houses going across in every state capital. Currently, the government uh, we have already gotten a site in over 12 states of the Federation to which Contra has already been awarded and uh, about to mobilize to site. Today being the uh, launching of the renewed Hof city, uh, city and estate by the president, he has launched this one in FCT Capital and he has directed that we should go ahead as the Minister and the Minister of State to do the groundbreaking in the remaining uh, 12 states that have been awarded already. This is part of the supplementary budget of 2023. The 2024 budget is about to take off and uh, we are still preparing the contract documents for that for the other states that are going to have. So it's a kind of a program that will bring in affordable housing in terms of the estates in, in, in the state of the federation, whereby one, two, three, one, two, and three bedrooms are going to be constructed in an organic mat manner, in such a way that uh, even if you can't afford the two bedroom, you can buy the one bedroom, and uh, incrementally you can convert it into a two bedrooms. This is the concept that we are now developing, and it has taken off uh, nationwide. As you quite well know, that housing is an area where it can create jobs, opportunities for Nigerians, and it can bring economic prosperity for the nation. The contract has been awarded, and contractors are already on site. Yes, we, we, we heard that they will create 500,000 jobs, and uh, we had an initiative like this as the rent to own, and it's not catching up as it should. But despite the increase of the NHF loan from 15 million to 50 yeah. million, many Nigerians still battle with accessing and financing mortgages for property owners in Nigeria. Even as MD of FBN, these issues were known to you and government's goods intention. Nonetheless, they continue con to constitute a clog in the wheel of progress. Now, what is the way forward? What are the options open to prospective owners of these estates? Well, there are many options. First of all, for the construction, for the houses that are being constructed, the options are there that either you, if you have the money, you, you buy off plan, or you uh, go into the mortgage to which the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is ready to provide a concessionary 6% rate, 6% interest rate for a maximum of 30 years. Or even the rent on which you have just said. The, the rent on doesn't have to go through other payment of equities and, uh, and the processes of going through the primary mortgage banks and others. But it's a matter of uh, being processed and then you get the keys, you pay either monthly or quarterly or even annually. The other option for Nigerians who could not even afford to go into the rent-to-own is the issue of individual construction loan. Where you have a title land, you can make your own design based on your capacity or based on your income. And then the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria is there to provide you that same concession rate, interest rate, to build your house at your own, uh, at your own uh, affordability and then within your own face. 
So if you say they can build according to their affordability, I can see from the pictures that is on the screen now, the buildings are sort of identical. Do you need to build identical buildings? You know, as, is that part of the scheme itself? Well, these ones you are seeing are the ones who are going to build in the cities. These are the high-rise buildings, whereby you have block of flats, the terraces, the duplexes, and the semi-detached duplexes. The ones who are going to build the other 30 states of the Federation, which are the Renewed Hope Estates, uh, bungalows, as he said, that are organic, that one bedroom can go into a two bedroom. They are on the same size of land, the one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom that you can easily convert it from one bedroom up to a three bedroom within the same land size that you are having. So the design doesn't have to be uh, the same, but uh, there are two concepts, the renewed hope cities and the renewed hope estates. That's what we intend to have. So who oversees the scheme now? Well, the, the, the Federal Minister of Housing and Urban Development, as you quite well know, that, that has been separated from the Minister of Works and Housing, has capacities in terms of uh, they have uh, state controllers nationwide in every state of the Federation. And in every state of the Federation, that controller has other professionals in the built environment that are there to supervise and ensure quality construction and supervision to the specifications. Well, it's good news to the ears of Nigerians, as President Tinubu says, Every Nigerian deserves to have access to shelter. Sure. I'm sure Nigerians are looking forward to owning their own homes wherever they are. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for coming on the program. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Good evening. We'll go on a break now. When we return, more on network news. <laughs> Thanks for rejoining us. The federal government is engaging in a $1 billion deal with the Green Imperative Project that will boost agricultural production in Nigeria and ensure food security. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports that this is coming after a meeting between Nigerian and Brazilian government officials bordering on some of the latest agricultural technology. It's a great opportunity provided to Nigeria by the Brazilian government to access the largest agricultural project called the Green Imperative is to overcome challenges in accessing technology to integrate global network to boost productivity. Uh, so we're essentially trying to uh, revive the process, especially in the light of the food crisis uh, uh, that is affecting the nation. This is the largest uh, uh, food production project in the world, it's almost a billion dollars. The uh, local assembly uh, of mechanization uh, implements uh, distribution to almost all 774 local governments uh, where you have uh, resource centers uh, that uh, will work on a commercial basis. It's not free uh, to uh, really, really uh, impact on all aspects of agriculture within the short and medium term. Apart from the service centers in all the local governments, they are also going to have regional centers to be the uh, foundation of supply to those uh, local governments. So we believe that this will transform the agricultural space. Making farming a dignified venture for Nigerian farmers, the project is providing a triangular cooperation initiative with long-term goals for food security. We want to cooperate and we think that one of the most strategic areas where we can cooperate is in agriculture. We have a long, long experience in developing agriculture. We want to share this with Nigeria. We think it's important. And this project, Green Imperative, is uh, one major step in building this new um, moment of cooperation between both countries. We are planning to have uh, assembling a plant and to bring the parts and to take advantage in other parts in the Nigeria market to assemble the components here. This is some special technology that we will bring to the Green Imperative project. With more than 80% of Nigerian farmers being smallholder, the implementation of the Green Imperative project is expected to give them access to high quality farm inputs for maximum productivity. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila. NTA News. And from the legislature, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, is urging Nigerians to be patient to reap the fruits of deliberate economic policies and investment on the nation's security architecture by the Tinubu administration. 
addressing a special press conference on the state of the nation at the National Assembly, the Speaker advocates synergy among the three arms of government towards achieving the security and welfare of all Nigerians. National Assembly correspondent Mitere Ipin tells us more. Thank you very much. It is uncommon for the Speaker of the House of Representatives to address a press conference on national issues outside plenary. And we're sure. Speaker Abbas says this became imperative to express solidarity with Nigerians on security challenges in parts of the country. To those affected by this scourge of insecurity, I want you to know that your government hears you loud and clear. We are taking decisive steps to address the root causes of this menace. Deploying both military and diplomatic resources to ensure that the safety and security of all Nigerians. It is a complex challenge, one that requires patience and a time to resolve. The time has come for us to demand greater transparency from our security agencies and full accountability for all the funds spent and earmarked for spending in the sector. Emphasizing the nexus between food security and national security, but I assure you, the Speaker says Parliament will provide legislative support for government policies to tackle food shortages. In addition to promoting security so that farmers can feel safe to return to their farms, the House will support import and export policies that stabilize food prices and ensure adequate supply of essential food items at affordable rates. Acknowledging that socio-economic challenges test the will of Nigerians, the Speaker urges citizens to refrain from resorting to slander against government officials and institutions, but engage in constructive dialogue. Earlier during plenary, the House passed a resolution asking the federal government to put on hold any proposed plan to recall the heads of chancery from Nigeria's foreign missions abroad. To recall all Nigerians head of chancellors at this time, Nigeria has, um, has no ambassadors. Having earlier withdrew on all ambassadors on her foreign missions will give credence to the dangerous assertions of a political instability back home that will be hazardous to Nigerian diplomatic relationship with other countries. The House mandated its Committee on Foreign Affairs to liaise with the Minister of Foreign Affairs with a view to resolving all issues in respect of Nigeria's foreign missions and report back to the House for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikwen, NTA News. The Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria have issued an ultimatum to the federal government for the implementation of the 16-point agreement reached with the organized labour on October 2, 2023. A statement signed by the leadership of the unions urges the federal government to honor its part of the understanding within 14 days from tomorrow, 9th February 2024. The organized labor expresses concern that despite the passage of time, the majority of the crucial agreements remain unmet. The agreements reached with the federal government were focused on addressing the general socio-economic hardship in the country occasioned by the hike in the price of PMS and the devaluation of the Naira. And on security, the Nigeria police force says it remains resolute in working to address the security threats facing the nation. Inspector General of Police Kayode Ebetokun stated this at the Strategic Police Managers Conference in Abuja. Francis from the post. It is the first Strategic Management Conference of the Force for year 2024 and the conference is to, among other issues, assess the prevalent state of the nation's internal security challenges and review the policing strategies in alignment with the fundamental tenets of modern policing mantra. IGP Kayode Egbetokun reminded the strategic managers of their roles in safeguarding lives and property. It is incumbent upon us to lead by example and leave no room for the negative elements in our midst to thrive and we are actively working to address the security threats facing our nation. By fostering stronger partnerships with communities, leveraging intelligence-led approaches, and enhancing our operational capabilities, we are dedicated to confronting these challenges head on. IGP Egbeto can also rail out some of the successes recorded by the force in combating all forms of crimes across the country. 
the Nigerian police force arrested 814 suspects for their participation in various crimes, rescued 107 kidnapped victims, and recovered 106 various firearms, 1,074 ammunition, and 41 vehicles. He further reminded the senior officers that they will not be assessed by a long list of achievements. The number of arrests made or the volume of weapons recovered from criminals, but efforts in resolving problems and restoring peace to troubled communities in their areas of responsibility. Francis from NCA News. Time now to join Michael in our Lagos studio for more on NTN Network News. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. Good to see you. A book which captures how Nigerians, irrespective of the personality, can collectively build a prosperous nation that everyone is proud of, titled Nigerian Public Discourse, authored by the former Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola SAN, has been presented to the public. Dana Jale, who attended the presentation in Lagos, reports that the book was officially unveiled by President Bola Tinubu. From the imperative of data analysis in policy formulation, and is the Nigeria Constitution the fundamental problem to governance and responsibility of the citizens, the 218-page book with 16 chapters covers many areas of realities in contemporary Nigeria society. Bashola has written a thoughtful, analytical and profound book seeking to correct hyperboles, disconstruct myths, and destroy fictions around public policy in Nigeria. President Bola Ahmed Tinimbu, represented by the Chief of Staff, commended the writer's dexterity in bringing to fore the subject matters highlighted. Why noting, obligation is more significant to ensure that engaging with each other spring from a shared agreement. He has approached the subject with an abundance of scholarly rigor, bringing his considerable intellect, wealth of experience, and passionate patriotism to a critical subject matter that has been too long ignored. So how do we fix that thing that is remaining? So that we need to start conceptualizing issues and not be emotive about it. Author of the book, Nigerian Public Discourse, about the Fashola SAN, described the book as a literary adventure aimed at reframing national discourse away from misconceived narrative and data brandishing in order to engender national growth and development. Nigeria is ranked on the list of nations where books are published. And this author is very delighted to have made a contribution to that global data. So accurate data will help us determine how many we are, what amount of water we need, what quantity of food. The book also contains other crucial issues, such as housing deficit, reconstructuring for a better life in Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. For a mega city like Lagos, urban planning and conformity with building regulations are major ways of maintaining standard for ease of access in emergency situation. Experts say many high-rise buildings in Lagos are not safety compliant. Jack Bukwala in this report examines the implications of this and how to foster reoccurrence of the recent fire incident at Mandela's in Lagos Island. Every city has a development template or master plan guiding the construction of houses, including where and what can be constructed in a particular area. With growing population, increasing housing demands, coupled with the need for makeshift structures for small businesses, illegal structures have become a festering sore. Experts say one of the major prerequisites for approval of any high-rise building is safety to guarantee a quick emergency response. Multi-story structures are a bit uh, peculiar in the sense that there are a lot of uh, requirements expected of them to, to be met. And um, this we continuously ensure that those standards are met in terms of having um, necessary firefighting devices in place. We have instances where uh, development precedes planning. For instance, in Lagos, there are many development plans. But the one for micro plans that will indicate where exactly you can build and what you can build. 
and we don't have many of that. With the sad narrative of the Mandela's fire, where emergency responders could not easily assess the site of the incident, government is determined to change this unwanted narrative. Many houses in Lagos lack relevant approval, while many approved for residential have been converted to other purposes not suitable for the area. What was built completely different from what was approved. So what do you see of that? So we should all try to keep by the laws. If we say you should have setbacks, the setbacks are for purpose. They are for the comfort of that building. Provision of social amenities and development of other towns, experts say will reduce the clumsy nature of the city center, but more importantly, stakeholders emphasize need for enforcement. In Lagos, Joel Ukbola, NC News. That is it from here. The news continues with Jumai Shot. You're welcome back. With the distribution of critical medical equipment to 15 selected health institutions across the country by the National Lottery Trust Fund, hope appears to be in sight towards addressing medical tourism in the country. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Zefania Dasalo, says the initiative is also in line with the renewed hope agenda of the president administration. Kanyev Nani reports. The National Lottery Trust Fund is mandated by law to spend 20% of the net proceeds from lottery and gaming to provide services for the well-being of Nigerians. The agency, in fulfillment of this mandate, is paying attention to the needs of healthcare institutions across the country by providing equipment to improve the quality of healthcare accessible to citizens. This approach is in tandem with our vision of promoting socially inclusive projects among all Nigerians in a balanced, transparent and cost-effective way. The benefiting health institutions expressed gratitude to the federal government and pledged judicial utilization of the medical equipment most of this equipment being given to us today, we don't have it in our facility. And in that community, we don't have it. Since the insurgency that happened some few years ago, that got our two functional ambulances destroyed, we are happy to have another ambulance now. In agreement with other stakeholders, the supervising ministry, special duties and intergovernmental affairs, expressed optimism that the initiative will be impactful in addressing issues in the healthcare sector. We urge all the beneficiaries to maintain this equipment so that other will be given to other communities. The Federal Ministry of... In a message, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, reassured Nigerians of federal government's commitment to providing adequate health care for all citizens. The National Lottery Trust Fund has also programmed activities to carry out its next intervention in the educational sector. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And for the latest in the world of business, let's join Benny Adams. Hello, Benny. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to business. Amid rising costs of commodities in the marketplace, the federal government, through the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, is employing a legal instrument to ensuring that customers get value for their money. To this end, the Weights and Measures Unit of the Ministry is seeking lead legislation to allow it bite rather than back. The first priority of this administration is to reform the economy to deliver sustainable and inclusive growth. Our challenge is not just to keep pace with change, but to stay ahead of it and then to be the architects of a legal metrology framework that not only meets the current needs, but also anticipates any future challenges. The Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, and the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms have agreed to collaborate on deployment of reliable data, public disclosure to support ongoing governance and institutional reforms and public finance management. 
Rising from an elaborate meeting in Abuja, the Executive Secretary of NATI, Dr. Oji Ogbonnaya Oji, and the Chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Taiwo Oyedele, have agreed to work towards improving Nigeria's macroeconomic environment. This is as the committee is also looking at oil and gas, which is the core area of focus by NATI, as well as non-oil resources like the solid mineral sector, which NATI accepts to support in areas of information and data. NATI's Director of Communications, Obi Agili Onora, says the collaboration will prioritize initiatives aimed at enhancing transparency, accountability, and integrity in management of Nigeria's extractive resources through promotion and facilitation of participatory and inclusive dialogue. And now taking a look at the markets, investors lost 480.78 billion naira as the all share index depreciated by 0.8%, continuing a negative trend. The all share index closed at 101,227.42 basis points, with market capitalization also recording a loss of 480.7 billion naira. The total volume traded advanced by 39.91%. To close at 438.38 million, valued at 7.17 billion naira, and traded in 10,957 deals. Univinture was the most traded stock by volume, with 42.7 million units traded, while Zenit Bank was the most traded stock by value, with 1.12 billion units traded. At the close of trading, the market recorded six gainers, 51 losers, and 61 units remained unchanged that is thanks for joining us the federal government has given the abuja electricity distribution company aedc two weeks to fix faulty electricity infrastructure or face sanctions chief electrical inspector of the federation ali Uchuko tahil gave the ultimatum while monitoring electricity networks in abuja joshua ojito reports there are reported cases of inferno attributed to faulty electrical installations. Nigerian Electricity Management Services NEMSA says safety of electricity consumers is key and the monitoring exercise is to sanction defaulting distribution companies as well as sensitize residents. Faulty installations identified in parts of the FCT are reported to AEDC but yet to be fixed after repeated calls. Also of concern is the faulty transmission line in Apple which poses threat to lives of traders transacting under it and NEMSA warns AEDC to act fast or face sanction. If it is not done within these two weeks, then an enforcement order is going to be issued to the utility company which is the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company. An enforcement order means that they have committed an offense and they are liable for prosecution. I'm worried. I'm worried in the sense that there should be investment in the networks to ensure that all these defects across the networks are effectively corrected and new networks are constructed in line with standards and regulations. The monitoring exercise will be extended to other parts of the country. Joshua Ojito. NTA News. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, has resolved to scale up dialogue with the three member states, Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso, that have expressed the intention to withdraw from the regional bloc. At the end of its extraordinary meeting, the Mediation and Security Council says it will do all it can to keep the three members within its fold. Kevin Ehone reports. The confidence of ECOWAS stems from the fact that its charter stipulates a period of one year to finalize withdrawal of membership. During that period, all steps taken so far will be reviewed and diplomatic engagement intensified because it believes that both parties have more to gain staying together. ECOWAS maintains the path, the avenue of dialogue, of conciliation, of diplomacy. And that is what has further been reaffirmed here. And ECOWAS is quite cognizant of the fact that uh, this intention of the three countries to exit ECOWAS would bring more uh, hardship to the common uh, uh, citizens of uh, those three countries. For Senegal, the issue of sanctions has not been considered 
for ECOWAS is concerned about the impact of the decision to postpone the presidential election on the citizens. ECOWAS's sanctions are determined, are decided by heads of state, and normally when constitutional, unconstitutional um, outcomes or unconstitutional activities are undertaken. That is when ECOWAS considers um, sanctions. Uh, or when member state of ECOWAS acts in a manner that contravenes ECOWAS's instruments, including protocols and treaties. The resolutions from this meeting are to be presented to the authority of heads of states and government of the regional bloc. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA. Still in the euphoria of Nigeria's win at AFCON, let's join Badi Adele for more. Hello, Badi. Thank you, Jumai. Now, Minister of Sports Development, Joe Neno, has charged the Super Eagles to be more focused ahead of the final showdown with Cote d'Ivoire. This was after Nigeria sports administrators and officials led by Nigeria Olympic Committee President Abu Gumel came calling after Super Eagles qualified for the final for the first time in 11 years. A few days ago, we got the Progressive Governors Forum to make some huge support to the players and to the team. I mean, today, tomorrow, we're going to continue. We're going to put a shout out to all Nigerians that love football and the country to come out and motivate these young people. We're going to write out letters and make personal calls and appeals. Don't leave it to government alone. Everybody has a stake. When their Golan team played against Nigeria, if it was going based on how much they motivated, we could never have won. We can't take that chance anymore. So corporate organizations, the private sector, everyone, the bankers committee, people should stand up to be counted. 